Hey, hey, welcome back. I hope you all had a fabulous weekend and you were pumped up and fired up after Thursday's episode with Sarah. Absolutely so, so good. Um, but we're excited to be back here. It's Monday. It's the beginning of a new week and uh, we have something that we really want to dive into today. So how are you doing, Sarah? So good. So good. Uh, you know, my favorite time of the year is coming up. I just ordered some new moccasins and, you know, pumpkin lattes are coming out. So I'm super pumped for this new season. This is my favorite season. Oh, me too. I love fall. I love, I love the change. I love the change. I, I never used to be one for change, but when I started diving into myself and learning that change is the only way to grow, um, I fucking love change. <laughs> mm -hmm. So good. Super excited I for today's topic. Yeah, me too. So today we're going to talk about stop playing it broke. And oh my gosh. We, we were talking about the topic we were going to talk about today before we came on here. Um, and it was going to be stop playing it safe, but we're never fucking safe. We never. are never safe, right? And if you think you're playing it safe, you're just playing it broke because I haven't talked to one person in a long time that has no debt and, and something saved, right? Yeah. Yep. So true. Um, I've been doing a lot of studying this last week. So I took a course with Eli Wild this last week. I've been studying some uh, Dan Pena and I've been listening to a, a lot because this is what I do, right? Like <laughs> I'm pretty excited that I get paid to learn because that's like the dream. And it was so funny. They taught me how to take zero dollars and leverage it into hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and how simple is it really? It's very simple. It's very, very simple. So the the you have to have the right attitude, right? When you go into it, your attitude is so important when it comes to getting money. And the facts don't matter. It's the attitude that matters, okay? So let's say, this is the analogy that I learned. So I, I'm investing in real estate and I'm using other people's money to get started. And I didn't understand that concept until I, I learned from this video. I, I don't even remember who I was watching. I think Donnie was listening to it. And I said, pause that, rewind it. I need to hear it again. And she was breaking down the mortgage percentage and where it comes from, okay? You buy a house, Kaylee, for $500,000, right? You mortgage it for 30 years. You end up paying over a million for that house, right? But you bought the house at $500,000. But after interest, which is 50% interest on your mortgage, you end up paying a million dollars for that house. But you don't see that, right? You're like, I got a great mortgage rate at 2.85%. But did you? Did you really? Is that a really good deal? Or would you take a credit card right? For like $10,000, $20,000. Negotiate a 0% financing for a year because everything is negotiable, including your mortgage rate. I negotiated my mortgage rate on a commercial property. And when I tell some people what I got as a mortgage rate, they're blown away. Because most people, when they're borrowing, you usually pay a minimum of eight to 12%, right? And people will be taken aback by that. They'd be scared. But if you actually look at it and you were to take that 8 to 12, let's just say 10%, okay? You take that for 10% and you buy a house that's now going to give you a return on investment that's going to create equity and you do that 12% for a year or two until you've gained equity on it and you can remortgage it with an A lender at a lower rate, it's cheaper than your fucking credit cards. Mm-hmm right? Because you max out your credit cards buying shit, right? TVs and dentist appointments and fixing your car that and your car doesn't make you money. And, and you do all that. And but you don't have a care in the world, you just charge it, you charge everything, you charge everything. And then you use your paycheck to pay back that charge. Right? I, I buy houses with my credit cards. <laughs> yeah, because I know the return I'm going to get when you can negotiate, you can negotiate rates with them. That's huge. That's a huge aha moment, I think, for a lot of people listening, right? Because when you, and this is something that I used to have a conversation with about my husband. So growing up, he never had money to spend, right? So when he got his first job and he had money 
and then he got a credit card. He just started buying shit with it. And I'm like, okay, listen, I said, you are using your credit card right now for things that will never do something for you. I said, so you have that, especially drive throughs right? drive through fucking food. You just ate that whatever it costed, 30 bucks for two subs. You just ate that. And then a month later, the end of the month, you get a statement for what you owe for what you already have that's gone that you don't have anymore because it's gone. And you're paying that every month. Think about this. You buy a cup of coffee for a buck 50 and you charge it and you add 24.99% to that dollar 50, right? And you don't pay your balance every month. That dollar 50 starts to grow. And before you know it, that dollar 50, that one cup of coffee is now a hundred dollars, right? Credit cards are, credit cards came out after the great depression to help people to, alleviate some worry and expenses, right? Came out in like the 1950s. Credit is not free money. Okay. And here you guys are complaining that you can't make money, but there's people willing to give you money. Okay. So if you say you can't start your business or you can't buy your house or you can't do this, if you own a house, you are sitting on a freaking gold mine to make you millions and millions of dollars but you're playing it safe. And so you're playing it broke. You're, you keep remortgaging your house to pay off your debt for the shit you keep buying because you're probably house poor because you spent 20, 30, 40, $50,000 renovating your house to make it look like a Pinterest board, which is nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. But if you want to be, you know, earn that money, you have to play it right. Okay. And there's people out there willing to give you money. A coaching program, people think a coaching program, they think it's BS, right? That coaching program that I spent 20 bucks a day on created a, a over, you know, seven figure lifestyle for myself. Right. So Kaylee, let's just do a little test. Kaylee, if, if, if you gave me a dollar and I gave you $10, that's a good deal. Would you take that deal? Yes or no? Yeah. Now, if you gave me $10 and I gave you $100, that would be an even better deal, yeah? Yeah. So you just 10 times your return. So instead of getting $9, you got $90. Yeah. So if you gave me $100 and I gave you 1000 that would be a better deal, right? Yeah. And if you gave me 1000 and I gave you 10000 that would be an awesome deal. Yes. So if you gave me $100,000 and I gave you a $1 million, would that be a better deal? Yeah. So would you agree that the more you put in, the more you get out? Oh, absolutely. That's in you. That thought is in you. It's in your business. But that investing comes from within. And so you want to invest more. And so if you hang out with five broke people, you're going to be the six. Stop asking your broke fucking friends for advice. They're giving you broke advice. Don't go and want to do something and then turn around and ask your broke friends and broke family members who are not getting the results, who are not on the level that you want to be for advice. You want to be in the game. You want to get in the proximity of the people who are on your level. And those people aren't, you know, doing these free challenges. They're not spending money on crap and flashy things. They're, they're people that are not half-assing it. You want people that are committed mentally, physically, emotionally, financially. And you got to get in the game because the more committed you are and the more you're around those people, it's exponential, just like your income. And so it benefits you to invest. But now you're going to say, Sarah, but I don't have money to invest. Well, let's go back to the dollar. You had zero dollars, okay? Kayla, you had zero dollars, right? Yeah. And you went to a friend and you'd say, I'd like you to lend me $10,000 for one year, right? Everybody knows one person that'll lend them some money. Yeah. Even, even the bank, you can go to a payday loan. Somebody would lend, people give away money. There's people, strangers would give you $10,000 at an interest rate, okay? So your friend says, sure, but I want 100% interest, okay? And so you take that $10,000, Kaylee, and you turned it into $100,000, yeah. So after you paid your friend back the $10,000, 
that you originally invested, right? Because you asked for $10,000, but then you paid them the $10,000 for the 100% interest that they were asking for. That leaves you with $80,000, correct? Correct. So you took $0 that you originally had and you turned it into $80,000. Yep. Hello. Right. <laughs> Right. It's out there. There is no excuse that you can use to change your life. Right. There's things out there. There's people out there. There's money out there. Everything that you need is here. It's you that's getting in the way of not making the decision to do something. Right. It's you not having a clear enough goal. It's you not giving a shit about your future. It's you not worrying about your kids. But at the same time, you're saying, little Johnny, I want you to do better than mommy. How the fuck is he going to do better than you if you're not even willing to better yourself? Yep. So we talk to a lot of people and um, a lot of people get money back on their taxes and they pay bills or a lot of people will get, um, you know, a chunk of money or something and they and they pay bills. Right. It, immediately it goes to pay, pay bills. If I pay the bills, then I alleviate this stress, right? But then that's gone. And I'm not telling you not to pay your bills, okay? I actually one time didn't pay my bills to invest in myself. And that was the starting point of my success. I was on uh, unemployment at the time and I was broke and broken and I had just consolidated my debt and I couldn't afford to keep up with the payments. And somebody offered me a job opportunity um, where it was like, I think it was like 250 bucks or something to invest. In. And so I skipped the heating bill or I think it was a gas bill at the time and to get in. But that 250 bucks in turn made me a couple thousand dollars. So I was able to do that. Right. And that's, that's what it is. If you're, if you're spending your retirement money right now because you can't get ahead, but you're already dipping into that retirement money, which is already costing you interest, you're paying interest every time you take that retirement money out, you're doing yourself a disservice. Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. So why not, if you're dipping into it anyways, why not turn it into certainty, right? Right. So like Kaylee and I, ha we, we build a system around you and it helps you to increase your confidence and multiply that confidence so that your family and your friends and your strangers will come to you with respect and advice on how they can help you. So now you're not that broke person that they're coming to asking for advice. You, you have scaled, you've scaled in your finances, you've scaled in your confidence, you've scaled in your business. And when you scale like that, it actually helps to alleviate the, some of the objections that you give yourself. Because now you trust yourself to make significant strides in your finances. You trust yourself to invest in yourself more because you know that money is going to give you a return on, on investment. Because you removed the fear, doubt, and inconsistency. And we changed that skill at which you think and communicate. And now you're more confident. So you show up more confident. And when you show up more confident, guess what? People look at you as an authoritative, authoritative person and they come to you for advice. Then you can start charging for that advice like Tony Robbins does, like psychiatrists do, like lawyers do, like all the people who you need to charge for by the hour do. You can do that. Mm -hmm. you Damn, can. I'm making good sense today. <laughs> That's my two cents. You've got it, Sarah. And it's it's not fucking, ro it's not fucking rocket science. Like it's, it's common things that can happen in your life every single day. And for example, when I got into wanting to change my current situation and I got into this material and I hired somebody to help me, do you think I was in the place where I just had 10 grand to throw around and be like, Ma, what should I use 10 grand for today? I think I might do this. No, I didn't have fucking money. But I knew from where I was in my life that if I didn't change or if I didn't do something different or if I didn't make just the decision to do something different, I wouldn't be here. But let me tell you, I did it. And when I got into this and I had somebody pushing me and I had somebody telling me, is that all you're going to do? Can't you do more? 
Do you want more? And somebody helped me create a roadmap for my life and I made it and I'm here. And now that I'm here, I want to be uncomfortable again because I'm continuing to grow. People see that. I, I show up. People see me online and people take offense to it as well because I showed up to my best friend's um, little daughter's birthday party, her five-year-old birthday. And her mom said to me, she says, here's Kaylee with her perfect life. And I thought, I fucking worked hard for this. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy to be successful. It's not easy to be fucking broke. They're both hard. But what hard are you choosing? Exactly. What hard are you choosing to wake up to today? Are you choosing to wake up and have the have the curveballs and the things happen in your life that are going to hinder your success and you push through them? Or are you going to wake up with all of your debt calling to you, all of your bills calling to you, your kids tugging on you and saying, Mom, let's go outside and play, but you're too fucking lazy because you're so stressed out that your life's shit and you're just going to say, I'll push through it another day. I'll push through it another day. They're both hard. Exactly. It's the same amount of hard to get up and go to a work that uh, go to a job that makes you zero money because you're not making money. Because if you were making money at a job that you did 40 hours a week, you shouldn't be broke, right? Because you're going to a place that's supposed to give you that income. And that's hard. And then in turn, you lose passion for life, which is hard because then your kids pick up on that. Or the hard is investing in something and giving everything that you got that you do in that job that you don't like and seeing if there's success. So faith is believing in the unseen and doubt is believing in the unseen. Which one do you choose? Mm -hmm. You know, Kaylee, when you, when you, when you got pregnant, right, you made the decision to be a good parent. Right? You decided you were going to do whatever it takes to support that baby and let them have a good life, right? Yeah. You decided first and then you committed to the process. You you know, I watch you with Noah. You, you take him outside. I love when he waters the garden. It's my favorite part. <laughs> That's, or when he's sweeping the floor. I'm like, oh, gosh, bless his soul. But, like, you commit to wiping his ass and cleaning his puke and, like, feeding him, right? And then you, you just figure it out along the way. Mm -hmm. But But people... People that try to figure it out before they decide, they never get it done. They're like, oh, let me figure out all this stuff and then I'll decide. Let me lose 30 pounds and then I'll hire the personal trainer. Let me pay off all this debt and then I'll hire the financial coach who will help me make millions of dollars, right? That's not how it works. There's an actual formula. And if you were to go to all the millionaires and billionaires out there in the world, they'll tell you that there's a syntax. And what we're talking about here today just like being a good parent, you make a strong decision that you're a good parent and you commit to really supporting this child and then you figure it out because raising a child is not a straight line, right? There's stitches and boo-boos and talking back and teaching them how, understanding the babble until they can form words and teaching them how to walk and putting them in a bubble to make sure that they, you know, they don't break anything. So when you invest in yourself, and what I'm talking about here right now is your goal, your dreams, your desires is like a baby, but all, but like all babies, they need care and support and they need a strong decision maker because it's up to you to make the decisions because they can't do it for themselves. So like if Noah had a, a, a fever, he doesn't say, mom, take me to the doctor because he, he doesn't understand that you have to take him to the doctor. Right. Yeah. That's your just that, that's your responsibility as a good parent and your goals need a strong decision maker. They need a parent, but you've got to invest. You've got to invest the time and you've got to invest the energy into supporting your baby so that your goals can grow up strong and take care of other people, including you. Right. But this, you know, this dream that you want to build this this is a baby that within a year or two could completely support you. This baby could take care of you and your babies and grandbabies for the rest of your life. This baby can support you. And but you have baby, to. Yeah. Sorry, Sarah, go ahead. This, this baby that you're supporting can allow you to spend time with your kids. 
right? So you can actually be a good parent. So you can commit to being a good parent. And you can't commit to being a good parent unless you spend time with them. And I know this because I grew up with with no like no love. I had no mom. My dad worked all the time. I got shipped off. And your goals, if you don't commit to your goals of being a great parent for your goals, how can you be a great parent for your kids? Because you know what's going to happen is the ones that you see showing up that you're following, the Kayleys, the Sarahs, the Tony Robbins, all the superstars on, on social media that you're following, that, that you're like, I wish I could be like them. I could wish I have their confidence. They're showing their kids what it takes. They're showing their kids now what it takes to be successful. They're going to Disneyland. They're going on vacations. They're active and they're healthy because they're in the right mindset. And your kid is watching their friends do all that. And they're going to grow up and they're going to be in the exact same position that you're in. And they're going to say, mom, dad, why couldn't you go after your goals and your dreams? Why couldn't you teach me how to be an entrepreneur? Why couldn't you show me what it takes? Why are you so fat and lazy that you couldn't play outside with me or go on the water slides with me? Why didn't you have that mentality? So then they grow up to resent you. So all of you listening who say you need to do it for your kids, you're putting your kids first. You're not fucking putting your kids first. You're putting you first and you're putting your kids second. Because if you were putting your kids first, you would do whatever it takes. You know why? Because I had that resentment. I can sing. I can sing and I always wanted to play an instrument, the piano or the guitar. And I always asked, why didn't you put me in that? Why didn't you put me in music? I could have been the next Adele. Why didn't you do that? And I had resentment. Why did you work seven days a week? Why did I have to work seven days a week? Because your kids are going to be who you are. So if you want your kids to be better, you need to be better. And money is not going to, holding on to that money is not going to do it. And yes, you need money. Money is important. Yeah, it's so true. And and that, that's what I was going to say. It takes commitment, right? Because don't get me wrong, not every single person is going to be the same as their parent. But the 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 kids that grow up to be different than their parents are the ones that make this decision on their own once they know how to, that I'm not going to continue this way. Even though I was born this way and grown up this way and, and seen this is how life's supposed to be. I was using air quotes for you listening um, on, on the podcast then. But the, the people that grew up like that and don't make the committed decision to change will always be that way. But there is a time in your life, even if you're fucking 60 years old, there is the time in your life when you can get real with yourself, stop playing it broke, and make the committed decision that I need to change. I need to do something different. Because guess what? You can live until you're 90. You could live until you're 100. So even though you may have won your first 60 years doing what you're doing, you can change that and make the next 30, 40 years of your life different. There's no time other than now yep. to make the decision, to make the commitment. Because I was I was doing a live last night and I was fired up because I was thinking about being committed and having motivation. If you're listening to motivational YouTube videos or you're listening to motivational podcasts and you're not committed, it ain't going to fucking do anything. Doesn't do anything. Because you're just going to listen to it. You're going to feel good while you're listening to it. And then as soon as it's time to do the thing and put the action in, you're not committed. So it doesn't exactly. matter. You're not going to move yourself towards it. But when you're committed and you've made the decision that it doesn't matter what it's going to take, I'm going to get there. You will get there. There's no if, ands, or buts. And I've talked about this before in that we're all on a path, right? We all have a goal. And, and to that goal, we have an idea of how we could get there, right? We have a game plan, so to speak, of what we want to do to move towards that. I don't think I've ever met somebody who has a goal and went straight there without getting a curveball or something thrown at them to knock them off track. Yep. The difference is 
the people that finally achieved that goal, they just changed the game plan when something didn't work. They didn't just throw on the towel and say, fuck that goal. I'm not going to be able to do it. Just forget about it. If you want it bad enough and you're committed to what it is you want, you'll just change the game plan. You're not going to change the goal. There's a difference between interest, being interested and being committed. Yeah. Yeah. Only 1% of people are committed. And yet you follow them and you know exactly what it took for them to get there. So, you know, stop saying you don't have any money because I have had so much money thrown at me in during the middle of the pandemic. Like take out that line of credit, invest in yourself, turn that $10,000 into $100,000, pay back the $10,000 or the $20,000 if you did the 100% interest and walk away with $80,000 in your pocket. That's what investing is. Whether you're investing in a personal development program, which is going to help you to build your confidence and it's going to get you to here where I am right now, right? It's the structure. It's the foundation of that confidence, that mindset, knowing that you go in with that right attitude, like we talked about at the beginning, right? Because you, a lot of you listening, call yourself entrepreneurs, right? Because you started a, a multi, multi-level marketing business, but you're not an entrepreneur because entrepreneurs invest in themselves. They invest in growth. The reason why your leaders are the top leaders in your business is because they continue to invest in themselves. They've invested in mentors. They have invested to go to every single one of the conferences, right? They continue to invest. So stop playing it broke. Let's go. <laughs> Simple as that. Awesome. And, if you, and if you need to create a goal and you don't even know where to start, reach out reach to out. us. Yep. We're here to help you create that. Yeah. And if you're driven and you're passionate and you're looking for change and you want to work with us, we're going to be doing another hiring soon. So reach over to Facebook at Conversion Solved. Um, we will be putting the details in there shortly. Uh, this is for those who are committed, like committed, not interested. We don't want you if you're interested. We want action takers. So if you're committed and you want to be top, you know, the top 2% and you're looking to make, you know, financial freedom, uh, head on over to there because we're going to be giving out the details really soon. Sounds so good. Hope to see you there. Yep. Yeah. Bye. See ya.